the White House, three days of talks between President Eisenhower and Britain's Prime Minister Eden are concluded with the signing of an eight-point declaration by both leaders. Sir Anthony signs the document, a pledge to defend human rights and persevere for peace, the Washington Declaration of Eden and Eisenhower. Nigeria welcomes Queen Elizabeth, and in the African colony's capital, there's impressive ceremony. This is Elizabeth's first visit to her largest colony. Nigeria is making the most of it. Everywhere, Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh are watched by fantastic throngs, summoned by African drums to the town of Lagos to see the great white queen from across the water. Shouts of Ekaba, welcome, and Kabayesi, long live the queen, ring out. Mothers bring their children for the thrill they'll long remember, the visit of the queen. In 50 countries, it's the global premiere of Helen of Troy. In Paris, a Trojan horse leads the way down the Champs-Élysées to the Normandy cinema, where the Warner Brothers Cinemascope Spectacular attracts an overflow crowd. London is another of the 140 cities taking part in the first truly international premiere in motion picture history. And Princess Margaret herself comes to the Warner Theater to attend the performance, which raises more than $10,000 for charity. Berlin, too, joins in the worldwide salute to Helen of Troy, the unforgettable story, three years in the making, of the face that launched a thousand ships. More than half a million persons around the globe attend the simultaneous showings. The streets of Buenos Aires are also lit up as Argentinians turn out for the six million dollar film which stars Italy's Rosanna Podesta as Helen, described by Homer in his Iliad as the fairest of her sex. Francis Jack Serna portrays the handsome Paris. New York's Gay White Way is linked with the other cities in the international premiere. Mrs. Pearl Mester, former American ambassador to Luxembourg, is among the distinguished first-nighters, lighting a Trojan victory torch at the history-making premiere of Warner Brothers' Helen of Troy. In an age of giant aircraft, the Air Force rolls out the biggest of them all, a 120-ton cargo plane, half a football field long, and with a tail four stories high. A huge ramp can be lowered to permit the loading of more than 80,000 pounds of cargo, twice the capacity of today's biggest military transports. The cabin, 90 feet long, looks more like a hangar and will, without squeezing, carry more than 200 fighting men. Powered by four turboprop engines, the giant plane will take to the air for the first time this spring. Hawaii, all visitors are eager for a closer look at this fascinating paradise of the Pacific. Their welcome is in the traditional island way. And for every vacationist, sightseeing is in high fashion. Motoring on an island road, these girls come to an overlook for a view of Diamond Head in the distance. They're wearing the new sarong fashions of silk designed by Pauline Lake. Jan has a taffeta-lined draped skirt. Beverly's sarong is a leaf design. Strolling in a Hawaiian garden, Beverly wears a sarong with bolero jacket. Jan's features a hand-stenciled tiger. Waikiki Beach with the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in the background. The girls' swimsuits carry out Pauline Lake's sarong styles. Jan's has the sarong skirt with applique flowers. Beverly's two-piece suit features an island print. At the end of the day, Beverly wears a cloth of gold sari evening gown. Jan Sari has a sarong draped skirt in silk gauze with gilt leaf design for an evening in Hawaii. On the flag bedecked rink at Cortina, the world's fastest speed skaters racing in two-man heats burn up the ice in the Olympic 500-meter sprint. 
Streaking over the glazed, lightning-fast surface, the skaters reach a speed of nearly 30 miles an hour. A 24-year-old Russian engraver flashes home first in world record-smashing time, 40 and 2 tenths seconds. A close second is another Soviet skater with a Norwegian third. American hopes ride high in the bobsled as drivers Bud Washbond and Art Tyler steer the U.S. sleds down the twisting mile-long run. But the highest the American sleds can place is fifth. The Italians, who know every treacherous bump and rut, swoosh down their chute at a mile-a-minute clip. The Russians, knowing they can't win, don't even enter. And the daredevil jet pilot Lamberto Dalla Costa and his jubilant brakeman give Italy the gold medal. In the men's giant slalom, Andreas Motorer and his Austrian countryman Tony Seiler are the favorites. Zigzagging through 69 gates, plummet downward for almost two miles in one of the most dangerous and demanding of winter sports. With his tremendous speed and fluid style, Seiler leads Austria to a 1-2-3 sweep of the competition. At 21, Tony Seiler becomes an Olympic champion.